Gary here with Pal Music, and in this video we're going to go over how to practice your pentatonic scales for mastery and technique. So this is not about practicing for creativity, but if you really master them this way and run them through some of the patterns that I'm going to show you and some of the routines, in those moments of creativity you're not going to feel limited by your technique, your timing is going to be strong, so it's still in service of the music. But if you wanna work on your creativity, your phrasing, emulating what you hear, things like that, using just one note at a time, then two, then three, then four, and just starting really simple and then building it out from there, consider my soloing for complete beginners course, and I'll also link to that in the description. Also, if you wanna consider becoming a POW Music patron, you'll get access to part two of this lesson, where we go over pentatonic stacks and one string and two string horizontal exercises and a downloadable tab PDF to go along with both videos. You'll also get access to supporting resources and extra goodies for all of my lessons as well as live weekly small group face-to-face -face video lessons. And the link for that is in the description. And for everyone watching this video, I have a free downloadable full color 18 page PDF that shows you all of the pentatonic scale shapes and the order in which you should learn them. And last but not least, the great folks at Runway Audio who make some of the best guitar cables on earth are giving away a $75 gift card to someone watching this very video. So you have 10 days from when this video is published to enter and the link is in the description. These cables are so awesome because unlike regular cables, which have this kind of rubber coating, which tends to get a little sticky and they get tangled more easily, this one has this super smooth like nylon mesh material and they also gave me a cool t-shirt so I'll put a link in the description in case you're looking to get some cables. Highly recommend these. Okay so in order to do these workout routines I really recommend you use a metronome. You could use a jam track, you could use a drum track but the great thing about a metronome is it forces you to internalize time, to feel the space in between the beats and the thing with a drum track is it's usually busy you know, there's the hi-hat, there's no space for you to internalize, and in that way, it doesn't really improve your timing the way that a metronome does, especially at a slow tempo. Practicing at slow tempos improves your time way better than fast tempos, because between each one of those clicks, you have to feel all of that space. You have to really get yourself on the timeline of that tempo. So I'm gonna give you tips for whether or not you just know one or two scale patterns or you've got the pentatonic scale down across the fretboard. It's gonna be the same tips. So I'm gonna start by putting the metronome on at 70 beats per minute. So the first thing I wanna do is be able to play up and down one of these scale shapes using eighth notes. So that's gonna be two notes per beat like this. One and two and three and four. And what I'm really doing is focusing on syncing up with that metronome, right? I'm syncing up with the beat. Every other note lands exactly with the beat. All right, so that's the bare minimum, what you want to be able to do. Now, if you know multiple patterns, do that with all of your patterns. As you guys know, I recommend you first master the two and a half shapes. If you haven't seen that video, check it out. But once you get to all of the patterns, you could also try something where you go up one pattern, down another, something like this. Really just focusing on your timing and tone. How's your timing, how's your tone? So I'm going to stop at the top of shape 5, but you can do the same thing going all the way back down the neck, and that's included in the tab. Alright, so we just did that at 70 beats per minute, and you want to track your tempo. How fast can you go playing eighth notes with clean technique, clean timing, clean tone, right? And you want to gradually increase that. So this is a way to kind of 
develop your technique in a systematic way, kind of like an athlete who lifts weights or runs distances. It's all about that progressive overload, to use a term from the world of exercise. So we did eighth notes there. You could also experiment with keeping your tempo, but doing eighth notes, then triplets, then sixteenth notes without stopping. One, two, three, four. Now we're gonna apply some patterns. So the great thing about patterns is every melody we encounter or we create is a pattern of some sort. Very rarely do they just go straight up and straight down. They do jumps, they do skips. So by practicing patterns in our practice routine, we're preparing ourselves for the melodies we're either gonna encounter when we're learning music or that we're gonna create when we're creating music. So the first pattern is called forward two, back one. So the pentatonic scale is a five note scale. So we have one, two, three, four, five, and then back to one, that's the octave. One, two, three, four, five, back to one. That's the octave, right? And then one extra note on top here in this pattern. So what we're gonna do is forward two, so starting on one, one, two, three, back one, two, three, four, back one, three, four, five, back one, four, five, one. So one, two, three, two, three, four, three, four, five, four, five, one. That's the first pattern. First you want to be able to do that in one octave and then backwards. One, five, four, five, four, three, four, three, two, three, two, one. So check this out. With the metronome, we want, you know, like a machine, we're not practicing creativity right now. We're working on our technique, our machinery, right? So even though creativity comes first, having good machinery will give you the freedom to be as creative as you want to be without technical limitations. All right, so here we go. One, two, forwards, then backwards. One, two, three, two, three, four, three, four, five, four, five, one. One, five, four, five, four, three, four, three, two, three, two, one. So first, just doing it in one octave. You want to make that metronome disappear. Now we're gonna go across the whole pattern like this. One, two, three, two, three, four, three, four, five, four, five, one, five, one, two, one, two, three, two, three, four, three, four, five, four, five, one, five, one, two, two, one, five, one, five, four, five, four, three, four, three, two, three, two, one, two, one, five, one, five, four, five, four, three, four, three, two, three, two. Right? You can do that with all the patterns. And you can do that also with triplets. Watch this with triplets. One, two, three, two, da, da. It actually works great with triplets because it's a three note pattern. Right? So, you know, you could try eighth notes, triplets, sixteenth notes. So again, finding a tempo where you're kind of pushing your comfort zone, but still your tone is clean, your technique is clean, and your time is clean. Let's try that in pattern four over here. Okay, and I'm gonna start on the lowest note of that pattern. One, two, three, four. And again, we could do these patterns going up and down shapes. So here's an example of say the forward two 
uh, back one through the shapes. And I'll do it with triplets and a drum track. One, two, here we go. And again, you can do this both up and down the neck, and I'll include both in the tab. All right, the next pattern is forward three, back two. So one, two, three, four, two, three, four, five, three, four, five, one. So let me do that with the metronome, and I'm gonna go all the way to the top and back again. Here we go. One, two, three, four, two, three, four, five, three, four, five, one, four, five, one, two, five, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, two, three, four, five, three, four, five, one, four, five, one, two, two, one, five, four, one, five, four, three, five, four, three, two, four, three, two, one, three, two, one, five, two, one, five, four, one, five, four, three, five, four, three, two, four. With triplets? This one's tricky with triplets because it's a four note grouping with triplets. A couple other things I want to mention. It pays to practice with a clean tone so that you're not hiding any of your mistakes and you're really hearing the quality of your tone. If you have a lot of effects and distortion, a lot of the little nuanced things that you don't want to be there aren't going to be heard. Like as I'm playing right now, I'm hearing some ghost open strings. A lot of times it's hard to avoid that, especially if you're just constantly going string by string because just lifting up your finger off a string you know, can make it ring out. So what I'm doing is using my palm most of the time to mute out uh, open strings that might otherwise end up ringing out. Sometimes I use the tip of my first finger on a note to, to mute the previous string. So like when I go through the scale, when I get to that note, the tip of my finger tends to mute the next string above and then the flesh of my finger mutes the string below. So my finger's kind of at like a 45 degree angle. It's not at a 90 degree angle like it would be with a chord. It's more at a 45. So, you know, these are the things you want to see is, are, you know, do I have this noise when I'm trying to practice? Are there ghost sounds and stuff? And how could I use my right hand to uh, remedy that or, or my left hand? So the last pattern I'm going to show you, and this is by no means the only ways to practice the pentatonic scale. This is just, if you do all of these, you're really gonna have some ownership over these patterns, over the scale, and you're also gonna improve your technique a lot. But there's only so much I can fit in here. These are my go-to ones, the ones I recommend the most often to my students. So the next one I call pentatonic stacks, and that's where we skip a note in the scale. All right, everybody, if you wanna watch part two of this video where we go over one other vertical pattern, which is one of my favorites called pentatonic stacks, and then a variety of single string and two string horizontal patterns for another eight minutes, with Fret Live animations, you can do so by becoming a POW Music patron, and you'll also be able to download the accompanying tab and a guided tab video. You'll also get access to supporting resources and extra goodies for all of my lessons, as well as live weekly small group face-to-face -face video lessons. And the link for that is in the description. 
All right, everybody, I hope you enjoyed that lesson. If you wanna see more like it, please subscribe, tap the bell so that you're notified of any new lesson. Let me know what you think, leave a comment. I love hearing your feedback. Happy playing, have fun with this, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Before I go, I just wanna extend a special thanks to Joff Weathermax, Don Stringham, William Spencer, Alan Leia, Derek Young, Cam Chernichan, Elise Island, and all of the POW Music patrons. Thank you so much for your ongoing support at patreon.com slash POW Music.